Please adhere to YouTube's selected guidelines before viewing content of this video. I do not encourage or condone any products, actions, or behaviors shown in this video. All videos are produced in a safe, professional, and controlled environment. Please do not attempt to replicate any actions performed during the video. All actions are performed by professionals. Alrighty, so today I'm going to be going to a tobacco museum in Tokyo, Japan. A tobacco museum? That sounds right up my alley. So as such, I am indeed very, very, very excited to pay the 100 yen admission fee, or I think about like 75 cent admission fee, and to go see what their tobacco history is all like. You know what I'm saying? I'm very, very, very excited to see what the Japanese tobacco museum is like. This museum is actually called the Tobacco and Salt Museum. So I guess we're gonna see some salt related exhibits too. But either way, I am still very excited to, well, go on a tour of the Tobacco and Salt Museum in Tokyo, Japan, that is for sure. Hopefully they let me vlog in here. I'm not sure. I really do hope that they do though, because I really want to make this video. This is, <laughs> this is so sick. It's a tobacco museum kind of thing. It's a tobacco museum. But I do think without further ado, let's go ahead and go inside and see if I can actually vlog in this museum or not and we'll take a look at what the tobacco museum in tokyo japan is all about hello our tobacco and salt museum oh. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, sweet sweet y'all they didn't have any issues with me vlogging at least at the front desk so i've got my museum guide and my admission ticket so hopefully I'm all good to go. Hopefully I'm all good to go, you know what I'm saying? There we go. Oh, I almost tripped on the escalator. That would not have been fun. I'm just gonna go ahead and take a look at the map real quick. So this is the map. I'm gonna go and just take a look at this real quick. So I've gotta go up to the third floor if I wanna see the culture and history of tobacco and all that sort of stuff. So I'm just gonna go ahead and show you guys what's going on here. So the second floor, which is the one I'm on right now, is the salt floor. And then we've got the tobacco floor right there. I'm going to go through the salt floor real quick. I'm going to let the anticipation build. And then I think I'm going to go up to the tobacco floor. So I have to go this way to get to the world of salt. And then I'm going to go upstairs and go to the tobacco museum. And they said as well on the front door that there should be a smoking area in here. So I think I might have to smoke a cigarette in the tobacco museum in Tokyo, Japan, which would be pretty cool. I ain't going to lie. Let's take a look at some, let's, let's take a look at some salt, y'all. <laughs> We're probably going to edit a lot of this out in post, but... I'm getting my uh, 85 cent worth. This is a, a boat made out of salt crystals. Okay, that's cool. This is cool, y'all. This, this is badass. Man, here I was thinking it's a salt museum. I was like, what's gonna be so cool about the salt museum? They have a boat made out of salt. That's badass. Do salt crystal cut in half. This is all salt? What? This is sick. I'm staggered. I thought this was going to be like the uninteresting portion because I'm interested in the tobacco. But no, this is actually really cool. Okay, this is actually badass. And it's like really well done for like kids too. Like it's all very easy and simple to understand. They have a whole explanation of the salt making process right here. Oh, this is so cool. Salt making process in modern factories. This is... This is badass. Do not touch. I won't touch. Do you want to know? Oh, I don't want to. I don't want to watch a video. Never mind. This is actually really neat, y'all. I'm, I'm kind of burning my way through this without really paying attention too much. Because I'm like, I'm interested in the tobacco portion, but it's still really cool. Rock saw Iran, Pakistan, France, Vilna. Got any from the USA? USA, there we go. USA rock salt. The best rock salt. I touched it. The best rock salt. That's the best rock salt. UK, Colombia, Poland. This just looks like granite. That's so weird. Legend of Saint King in Poland. I have no clue what this says, but what I do know is that this guy's pretty badass. Let's see. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what any of this says. I have no clue. But I do know though, this guy looks cool. It's a religious, like a religious looking statue, but he's holding salt. That's hilarious. Get myself a little bit salty. <sighs> Yo, it's lake salt from Salt Lake City. For under a dollar for admission, this is really good. And I haven't even gotten to the tobacco board. I'm staggered right now, y'all. I'm going out the other side, I'm going upstairs. 
So now we're going to the tobacco portion. And this is the portion that I've been waiting for. This is the portion that I'm hype about. I gotta figure out what to do first. I'm gonna go take a look and see what there is. Is there a smoking lounge up here? Oh, that's it. That's it right there. That's the smoking lounge. Okay. I'm definitely gonna go have a smoke after I go through this museum. Let's, uh, let's go to history and culture of tobacco. Okay, I gotta take a look at this first. I'm gonna take a look at this first because they have a collection gallery of, I assume, tobacco-related stuff. Yes, tobacco. Tobacco containers. They have a collection of tobacco containers? Oh, this is dope. I want all of these. This time we will introduce tobacco containers for Japanese Kazama tobaccos, European pipe tobaccos, and Chinese and European smells. This is so cool. I'm gonna start at the end over here and work my way back this way. So we can see one that is literally just a drawer. These are all beautifully made. These are beautiful. That one right there is pretty cool. So these are all containers right here for Japanese, like finely cut tobacco. What do they call it? They called it Kazama tobacco. I'm gonna have to find myself one of these to use. I'm gonna buy one from the museum right now. Just kidding. I don't think they'd ever, I don't, I don't think they're selling me any of these. So this, these though are all for snuff which explains why they're a lot smaller. This one looks like an AirPod case. <laughs> this one right here, I think this one's probably my favorite. I mean like pink and black rock it's carved out of. That's so cool, that's beautiful y'all. All of these are gorgeously made. So now we're going to the European pipe tobacco. There's this one, So this one. These are all European pipe tobacco. They, 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 got, they got the puppy, they got the guy reading his book. This is definitely from Germany, definitely from Germany. There's no way it's not. They got a lady smoking a pipe. They got cats. And then they got another dog. Oh, this is so cool. This one feels like something I'd see in a thrift shop, but honestly, I ain't gonna lie. Now that I've taken a look at their collection, at their collection stuff, I think it's now time for me to go through the history and culture of tobacco. I think that's the plan. So here we go. So it's talking about the smoking gods at the Palink ruins. Within the inner chamber of the Temple of the Cross in Palik is a relief carving of a god smoking tobacco in a, in a cigar-shaped form. This relief, currently the oldest known tobacco-related artifact in the world, implies that tobacco was once a sacred plant linked to the gods. Well, this is a known fact kind of thing, but that is really cool. <laughs> There it is, y'all. He's smoking, he's smoking. Oh, that's so cool. That's what I'm talking about, y'all. That was really cool. That was really cool. That was only a three minute video. I learned so much. I learned so much. I thought tobacco originated from North and South America, but no, it was just from South America. That is, a, this is actually teaching me so much. See, here's some tobacco plants. These both basically originated in the same area. There are some slight differences. This one's quite, quite a bit taller, if I do say so myself. So here's some really, really old clay pipes. So this one right here is from the 11th to early 16th century, Western Mexico, same, same, same and same. So this is all from the 11th to 16th, early 16th century, found in Western Mexico. That's really cool. So this is from the 7th to 11th century, and it shows a guy smoking. And then this one shows a guy smoking, and this is from the 6th to 9th centuries. Wow, that's really old. That's older than your mom, bro. Older than your mom. Damn, and your mom's really damn old. And this one's from the 7th to 11th century as well, and he's smoking, you know what I'm saying? He's smoking. And then here's some more pipes. This one has, this one has two. That's so cool. This one has two. One, one. I want that. Just imagine the video. Smoking tobacco out of a 7th century tobacco pipe. Imagine that, y'all. That would be badass. And then here's stone pipes. That's, that's, that's huge. I don't think I'd want to lift that. These are all designed so well. These are so cool. Cooler than some pipes I see these days. That's really cool. I think I'm gonna move on now. So here's some really nice pipes. Unusual rustic kiss roofs from the early Edo period. A heavy iron kiss roof first appeared in the Edo, early Edo period. It's called a Kenka kiss roof fight pipe. 
Okay, so it's called Fight Pipes because it's so heavy. The guy who found out about this stuff thought that people clubbed each other to death with it instead of smoking out of it. That's why it's called the Fight I'm like, honestly, look at how big this thing is. I would not be surprised at all. That's cool, though. That's so cool. Fight Pipes. I had no clue that was even a thing until now. I'm learning so much. So here's like an old setup. So here's the tobacco they would use. Here's a kitchen pipe. Here's their setup to like grind everything. And then there's like their little pouch they'd use. And then there's the little pouch for the pipe itself. But they all have different names. So this is the kitchen pipe. This is a tobacco on. And this is a tobacco core. So tobacco carrier, I'd assume. Tobacco box. Okay. So in the Edo period, tobacco was typically consumed where it was made but wholesalers also sold it in big cities where it wasn't made, which makes sense. I don't know what any of this says, but either way, pretty cool stuff. I notice how they kind of skip over the entirety of Hokkaido up there, uh, probably because they don't grow tobacco in Hokkaido because it gets too cold. So you, could, you used to be able to get custom-made stuff, like the pouches and... So you used to be able to get custom-made pouches and kisserus and stuff like that is essentially what this is saying right here. And so this is what an old storefront would look like if you lived in the Edo period and you wanted to buy a kisseru and a carrying case and one of the boxes. This is what it would look like. This is so cool. So this is what the preparation process used to look like. So he's cutting the tobacco, she's brushing it, and then she's handing her some paper. And then there's a cat in the back too. How cute. And then so here's some art of people smoking, I assume. I'm trying to find more people are smoking, but I don't see it. I don't see anybody smoking right here. Oh, he's holding a kiss root. There we go. He's holding the kiss root. A parody Buddha. Oh, man. So this is from the 1800s. And so this is a parody Buddha. Oh, that's hilarious. That's hilarious. I love that. Man, they were making Buddha parodies back in the 1800s. That's baller. So here's some really fancy tobacco bonds. So here's like a wooden one made from natural wood with a pot in the center. Here's another one with ivies. I don't know what that means. Oh, like I oh like ivy leaves. Leaves, leaves. That's pretty cool. This would be the one I'd want, honestly. Any of these is just too much. I want that one. And then here's some kisseru pipes. Metal kisseru. The last kisseru. This looks like a crack pipe. I ain't gonna lie, well, it really do look like a crack pipe. So we have just normal pipes and stuff. So we have clay pipes from the 17th century. Clay pipe molds, that's cool. We have some clay pipes from the uh, Netherlands in the uh, end of the 19th century and the United Kingdom as well, and the United Kingdom as well. Like, how are, you, how are you even supposed to light that? That, how are you even supposed to light that? How are you supposed to, how, the thing is like half, the thing is like over half my height. It's huge. Oh, made by Dunhill. Now that's cool. Now that is cool, y'all. It's Napoleon? <laughs> hey, yo, homie, we smoking out of the Napoleon pipe. So here's a Venetian glass pipe. <laughs> that's not the same kind of glass pipe they have these days, that's for sure. It's a bird holding a cigar. And the bird is dressed as, as the Pope. I'm pretty sure the bird is dressed as the Pope. Um, I want this, like, now. So yeah, here's like a bunch of snuff packages. Here's one that looks like a gun. And here's a bunch of others. A seashell, shoe. There's a hand. It's a tomahawk shaped pipe. So here's Middle Eastern, sort of like uh, hookah, I think. Wooden brass water pipe. Okay, yeah. This is definitely not the type of water pipe people think of when they say water pipe these days. I'm like, I will admit, this one literally looks like, this one literally looks like a bong. These are all definitely more like hookahs, I'd say. Cord pipe. So these are essentially, no, these are, they, those are, those are literally, um, what, what's it called? Steamroller pipes. These are steamroller pipes, right? Yeah, no, they're steam oil pipes because they're, they're, they're open on the bottom. So you can just stick them in the water and smoke it like a normal water pipe. So cool. It's time for me to move on to cigarette stuff. So let's go and take a look first off at cigarette holders. I 
think probably my favorite though for what I'd actually use is probably like this one right here or this one right here. Taking a look at some cigarette cases though, these are better than every cigarette case made today. Moving on from the cigarette cases, we move on to cigarette cards. He's chilling. He's, he's vibing. This is an iconic, this, isn't this like an iconic painting or a photo or something? I can't remember. I know that poster. I've seen that one before. I've seen that one before. I haven't seen any of these before. I've seen that one before. No, no, no. <gasps> oh, wait, what? Oh, it's old cigarette packaging. And it has the country where it's from right next to it. So this one's from Libya. This is really nice packaging. I'm gonna lie, I'm a huge fan, absolutely huge fan of this packaging. Ooh, Chad packaging. This is definitely the most Chad packaging packaging I've seen, I'm gonna lie, y'all. You know, he put himself on the packaging. What, what a baller. He put himself on the packaging. So these are from like 1972. And it says that right there. Here's some uh, rooster cigarettes, also known as ha, -ha cock cigarettes. Whoa, ha, 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 ha. Here's pliers, pliers. United Kingdom, Dunhill, menthol filter. That's pretty cool. So here's Turkey. This is this is some good packaging. It's got a lot of detail. Um, uh, it's backed by a white background. And for that reason, it looks minimalist, but there's still a lot of stuff going on with the design. This is really good packaging. I really like that. And we have, oh, here we go. We get the Kretex. So here's Good Angeron, Kuda Kretek, and Krakatoa Kretek. That's pretty funny. I want, I want, I want to smoke a Krakatoa Kretek. ACM cigarettes. That sounds like it's right out of a what? Um, ACM cigarettes. That sounds like it's right out of a. Sounds like it's right out of a Wiley, uh, like um, not Wiley Coyote. Roadrunner skit with Wiley Coyote. That's what. It, that's what it sounds like. That's hilarious. These still exist today. These still exist today. I know that for sure. That's really cool to be able to see the old packaging. Oh, Australia. Here we go. Any Australians? Let me know if you guys recognize this stuff. Here we go. So, I'm in Tokyo right now at the Tobacco Museum. And here we have some Brazilian cigarettes named Tokyo. Here's Mexico. Huh. And looking from the US of A, we have a pack or two that I've seen and a pack or two that I haven't seen. So, this is really cool. Okay. So we have some very fancy Philip Morris cigarettes. So here's the front. This is this is beautiful. Such badass packaging. I love that. And then we have the classic camo filters, of course. And then we have LNMs. What is going on with this LNM packaging? It's a guy and a girl. Oh, LNM, bring that back. This is beautiful. What does that even say? It says full flavor blend. Oh, so this is just the normal LNM reds. Then we have Cools. We have Willie the Cool Penguin. I think. I don't know what he's doing right there. But we have Willie the Cool Penguin. And then we have Canada as well. Sportsman and Export A's. I smoked Export A's before. They are great. French on one side and not French on the other side. Smart move by them. This has got to be some of the best packaging I've ever seen, though. That is beautiful. Wide awake. I like that. Oh, here we go. Carolina. That's what I'm talking about. This is beautiful packaging. I love that. <laughs> this looks like, that looks like something I'd draw. I'm gonna have, I love that. That's hilarious. That would never fly these days with the legislation to have these days in the United States, but that's still amazing. Gold Flake, proof that Gold Flakes used to be sold in the United States. I love the, I love the moon cigarette packaging. That's hilarious. I love that. I wanna smoke one of these. Cycle cigarettes. Liberty cigarettes, America, you know, the basic. Foreigner perceptions of Japan, Japanese smoking, bigots, drawings of the Japanese. Yeah, it sounds about right. Oh. Oh no. Oh no. His name is actually Bigot. <laughs> it wasn't meant to be an insult. I was like, okay, I guess he might be a bigot. I don't know. No, his, his name is actually... His name is actually Bigot. So now it is time for me to take a look at everything else they have in here. Okay, so this is basically a very old tobacco cutter that basically just compressed tobacco and then cut it like that. And then here's the hand-operated cutting machine, which uses cogwheels in its construction, early 19th century. This one was made in the 18th century. This one's early 19th. 
let's take a look. See, here's a cigarette cart. Delivery wagon as an advertising medium. We can see guy holds a pack. There's a really big pack. Here's another really big pack. Best in the world. I believe it. I don't actually. Oh my god, there's more cigarette packs. Oh, hell yeah. Oh. Yes, sir. Seven stars. Hope. There's some talking about. Oh, this is a lot of packs of cigarettes. And here's like some old toasters and stuff up here. So here's some cigarette packages from the Meiji period. Here's some others. Sunrise cigarettes, race, canela, anything I recognize? No, not really. Favorite cigarettes? Haha, <laughs> these are my favorite cigarettes. Oh wait, they're not mine. They're the museum's favorite cigarettes. And then here's more modern cigarette packs. So here's some from like the early 1900s and stuff. I'll go ahead and show you all these. So here's like Cherry, Star, Lily, there's some other ones, I don't know what they're saying. Monopoly era, this is tobacco, fine cut tobacco, cigars, golden bat, golden bat still exists today, I've gotta to find some. Honeybee, Wealth, Homer, that's pretty cool. Tobacco for export, that's pretty cool. Oh, here we go, Peace Cigarettes. I got a pack of those, I'm gonna have to smoke one, I'm gonna lie y'all. Glory Cigarettes, Salon, Cherry, Paloma, Paloma, Ferrara, Kohaku cigarettes from 1930. Oh no, so these are all from like the 1930s. Okay, that's pretty cool. I should have been paying attention to where these are from. Oh, it actually doesn't say. I don't really know. This, this is from 1904 to 1914. So all of these are from ten, that 10 year period. And here's from 1915 to 1928 coming down here. In 1929 and 1936, excuse me, coming down here. So Hope has been around for like almost 100 years, if not more. Palmoa. Here's a, a commemorative tobacco. That's pretty cool. Kyoto Tobacco Exhibition. That's cool, y'all. Kohaku. This packaging is fantastic. I love this packaging. This is really cool. I love this packaging. This is so distinct. This is from 37 to 54. 46, 46, 48, 52. Peace. Peace. Corona. That's cool. And then here we go. We have 55 to 64 now. And then we have highlight cigarettes. I think those still exist. We have a bunch of hope cigarettes. We have peace. Oh, what? This is a pack of peace. What? That's so cool. This is badass packaging. I love that pack. This is all so badass. What? This is all, th that all looks amazing. And here we go. Cigarettes from the Tokyo Olympics in 1964. That's so cool. And here we go. More commemorative Olympic cigarettes. What? That's so cool. Then we have Shinsei cigarettes. And here we go, 65 to 74. We have Cherry and Ran. And then here we go, we have the classic seven stars packaging. Hope, Seven Stars, Luna. This is all amazing. And the Expo 70, Expo, Expo 70 commemorative cigarettes. These are beautiful packs. Man, I wish, I wish cigarette packs still looked like that today. They're absolutely gorgeous. Gorgeous packs of cigarettes. Man, all of these look so amazing. What? This looks so cool. These all look so cool. This is beautiful. Beautiful. I'm not such a big fan of this one, but it's a fun name. This like text mini star. That's so cool. Oh, you can hold. Oh, you can. <gasps> what? So you get more details about it by doing that. I'm not gonna do all that for all of the cigarettes, but that's still really cool. So now we have 75 to 84. So we have mild seven. No longer called Mild 7, now called 7 Stars because you can't put the name Mild on anything anymore, so yeah. Oh, there are two. <gasps> There's even more. <laughs> MF cigarettes. What? It's the thinker. What? There's so much. 
I can't show y'all everything, I don't think. If I did, this video would be... I've been in here for an hour and a half already, and this video is not going to be an hour and a half. So if y'all want to see everything, come here yourself if you're in Tokyo. Great museum. Cabin, Caster, Cabin 85, Halftime, Mellow Taste, Nova, Joker. This is great packaging, and this is from 75 to 84. Peace Lights, Frontier, Mild 7 more. Caster, Entry, Melody, Stingray, Liberia, 7 stars. This is 2001 through now, I guess. So we have seven stars right here. So here's highlight. See, so yeah, this is when warning labels started to become a thing as well. Then we have advertisements concerned about the odor of cigarettes. So we have that. Then we have Mevis right here. Then we have more Mevis. And then now we have heated tobacco products, which they put right here, which they're calling the new form of cigarettes. This is Plume. This museum is obviously sponsored by JTI, no surprise, because um, Plume, is JTI's uh, heated tobacco product. Oh, look at all this. So this, let me just show y'all real quick. This is like an old tobacco store storefront that you would see in Japan. And here, oh, here's an old cigarette vending machine. And it actually still works too because the light's on. Oh, this is so cool. So we can see all of these right here. 150 yen. It's like what, seven, a dollar? That's not bad at all. So here we have some seven stars cartons. Do not touch that phone, apparently. Then we have some packs down here. Lumberjack. Some pretty cool packs if I do say so myself. Cabin, Current, Hope, Luna, Epson. I'm gonna do this real quick. Oh, if I can. Let's see if this will work. Will this work in the way I want? Kind of. What cigarette do you want? That's so cool. So I just realized that my video that i accidentally turned off my video like three minutes ago whoopsies it is what it is uh, what i was saying during that time though is that i've pretty much covered everything i think i want to cover this museum is so well put together if you guys are in tokyo come by the tobacco and salt museum it really is fantastic both the salt portion and the cigarette portion i'm gonna go have a cigarette in their smoking area though and i'm gonna finish off the video there i think This has got to be the nicest, uh, no, I know I'm normally not showing everything to you all right. There we go. This has got to be the nicest smoking uh, room I've been in so far in my time. Most of them don't even have sheets. This is a really, really, really nice smoking room. Let me just show you all real quick. Look at how nice this room is. This room is beautiful. A little bit echoey, don't get me wrong, but like, it don't matter. That don't matter kind of thing. Let's go and get this all that up though. Yes sir, yes sir, I'm saying, I'm saying. This place is really nice. <laughs> this museum is fantastic. I am so impressed right now. I'm like, it was, it was 100 yen to get in. And I've been in here for an hour and a half and there's more stuff I want to go look at. It's such a good museum. I, I feel like I missed so much. I haven't looked at everything. This smoking room was worth the entry. I ain't gonna lie, y'all. This smoking room was worth the entry. Man, I really do have no complaints on my behalf. It's a little bit echoey, but still, it's beautiful. It is a great smoking room. Well, I've been enjoying this cigarette, that is for sure. I certainly hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video. I think I'm gonna go and end the video right here. If you guys have enjoyed watching this video, where I, well, went to a tobacco museum in Tokyo, Japan, of course, please make sure to well like and subscribe for more content. I have my Instagram, my book, my merch, my PO box, and my second channel all in the description down below. Go check it all out. But yeah, thank you very much for watching, y'all. It's been a lot of fun making this video, and I'm very, very, very glad to have been able to show this museum off. And this is my first time ever in this museum. I've never been to this museum before, and it was an amazing experience. I highly recommend it. Whether you're a smoker, whether you're not, either way, it's super fucking cool. It's super fucking cool. This museum is so nice. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm gonna... <laughs> I'm gonna be coming back the next time I'm in Japan, for sure. 100%. There's no doubt in my mind I'm coming back. Till the next one, y'all.
Stay safe and peace. Never grow one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying.